This is Dr. S. P. Arsa from Mechanical and Industrial Department, IIT Roorkee. In the course of vibration control, mainly we discussed till now about the uh, various basic controls, uh, basic control theory in that, in which we discussed about that when the vibration is transmitting right from the source to the receiver, then how we can effectively put some kind of isolators or the damping towards that. And in the previous class, we discussed about that you see you know like when the flow induced vibration is there, then first of all what exactly the mechanism is there in that and then how effectively we can reduce those flow induced vibrations, not only from the amplitude or the frequency side, but also when you see you have such a used sound, then what is the effective way to control that. We also discussed about you see when the unbalanced rotor is there, then certainly we have a huge amount of vibration amplitude and the same time you see it creates huge sound as well. So, in the previous cl class you see we discussed all that basic theory about this and then you see what is the effective solution for this. In the coming lecture you see here, we are going to discuss about the another control technique that is the feedback, means you see here if the system is of such kind uh, of some kind and you see here we have the output. We know you see here the outcome is basically based on the system's performance and there is a desired output. If there is a difference in that, we can straightway put that difference which is called the error and then we can get you know like something that you see how we can reduce the error to get an effective control parts on that based on the system performance. So, in this part you see here again we are starting from the feedback control. The feedback control of mainly two types, it is a closed loop or open loop. So, again you see if you are really going towards the effective control system, we can certainly go for the closed loop system in which we can put the error and then we can simply give the kind of feedback. So, feedback or closed loop which is you see the same uh, similar name you see here systems, the feedback information from the process to control operation of the machine. So, feedback is just like you see here the corrected input through which you see here we can effectively increase the performance. One of the earliest closed loop system was that used by the Romans right from you see the Roman age to maintain the water levels in their adequate by means of the floating walls. So, floating walls were acted as the feedback controller in that way. The concept of feedback loop or the closed loop to control the dynamic behavior of system is this is negative feedback because the sensed value means the outcome is subtracted from the desired value as you see based on the system designed or something you see here the desired value to create the error signal which is amplified by the controller and then again you know, like feedback to just giving you know like input towards the system input part. Any system in which the output quantity is monitored and compared with the input, any difference being used as the actuator just to actuate the system until output is almost equal to the input. That is what we are saying the closed loop or feedback control system. So, our actuator in the second iteration is basically the error in between the desired and the designed value. And you see here it absolutely depending on the system performance that how much error can be reduced in that iterations. So, if you are going towards the general system, there are three models which can be used as a feedback controller. First, if the given part is for a motor command then certainly we are looking for what is the outcome that is called the forward model. For desired outcome means the outcome is already somewhat the desired value, what are the motor commands that is the inverse model, the reverse model. And the third one from the observing for observing the outcome, how should we adjust the motor command to achieve a goal that is what your feedback control is. So, right from the forward and inverse, here the things are coming that how we can achieve our goal. So, based on that you see here 
we can simply frame a basic model about the feedback control system like we have the goal which we are simply giving to our motor command and there is you see here you know, like the process which is happening with the motor and the action will be taken place towards the robot in the environment. So, you see here the command is given to robot right from the action part and the robot is now giving some kind of activity whatever the desired activities are. So, it is in the outcome. So, if there is a difference between the outcome and the goal again you see here this is somewhat we are saying that the error and again this error will be you know like given as input to actuate the motor so that it can be amplified and again given the action to the robotic feature. So, just to achieve the real goal. So, you see here in this the essential feature in the feedback control system of an any automatic control part in this is the existence of feedback loop to give good performance. And if the measured output is not compared with the input system, the loop is open. So, you see here if you are you know like not looking for an accuracy or something like you see, we just want that the action should be happened. This is a kind of open system whatever the outcome is. Then you see here like uh, we cannot just go with the error and all the actuation feature in the second iteration will come into the picture. Usually it is required to apply a specific input to a system and for some other part of the system to res respond in the desired way. So, we just want that system should respond in a proper way as our desired value should be there at, as an outcome. The error between the actual response and the ideal response is detected. We need to measure out you see here and we need to get the value accurately and then again feedback, feedback to the input to modify it so that the error can be reduced and again you see here it all depends on as I told you it all depends on the system's characteristics or the system featured that how many iterations does it require to come closer to the real value, your goal. So, the output of a device represented by a block in a block diagram cannot affect the input that device unless a specific feedback, uh, feedback loop is to be provided. So, we can see that we have a reference value as an input, then you see here the measured error which is coming out from the systems input and output is to be faded again to the controller. This is something like the actuator, the controller is magnifying that feature and again giving the system input to this. So, if we are just looking as a simple system, the system is maybe it is a linear or non-linear system. If we have a system, there is an input, there is an output, but when you see here the difference is there from the output, the difference has come out just sending back to the sensor to actuate the measured output again simply you see here you know the input you know the output it will go towards the reference part the measured error there and then it is going back to the controller. So, if you look at the you know, like the entire system in this you will find that we have the reference we have the measured error there it is just going to the controller system input for the system part this is what the system performance is and then you see here this entire system right from the system output to the this part the error it is all you see here based on that how the system is being acted there. Then if we are just going towards the next feature then we will find that you that if it is you know like uh, the error is being coming out as the input and output then we need to see that what exactly the nature is there in that. So, in general both input and output vary with time and the control system which may be you see here the mechanical or pneumatic or hydraulic or electrical in any operation or in combination of anything that can be recorded that can be we can say uh, you know like uh, featured out and the differences can be happened and accordingly you see the actuation signal is generated towards the system. So, again you see in that it is not all the time that you have the voltage or you have the current or you have the mechanical force anything can be happened right from mechanical to pneumatic to hydraulic to electrical or even in the combination of these to other power sources. 
The system should be absolutely stable, so that if excited, it will settle to some steady value. Because if we have the transient nature as an input, certainly it will affect the system performance. And whatever the outcome is there at one point of time, if you do the iteration by you know like say uh, the um, um, error or something you see in the actuated part, the things will not be accurate during the second iteration or next one. So, we need to go up to a certain value of the stable feature just to get the steady state output and it should be accurate in the steady state as well. So, we can say that you see even whatever the input is there, we have to be just check that the whatever the input is going, it should not be in the transient mode, it should be in the steady mode, so that we can get a steady state output and then you see we can straight away check that how much error is there. And this is very much valid to our vibration problem, because vibration of many structure and the devices are simply controlled by the sophisticated control methods. It is not all the time that you see we need to apply the insulators or material damping or something to effectively control the vibration amplitude. Some sophisticated methods are also be there. Just like you see here, the use of feedback control to remove the vibration rays from the machine tool to tall buildings and even for the large spacecrafts also, where it is not all the time feasible to apply the isolators. One particular way to control the vibration of a structure is to measure the position and the velocity vector of the structure and to use the information to drive the system in direct proportion to its position and velocity. So, once you get the variation or the range in the displacement and velocity which are the two effective dynamic parameters, then again you see here we can simply see that how much variation is there, we can simply feed to control this much in that. So, this information is really required to drive the entire system. So, we can use these two information effectively. How? Now, you see we are taking one of the basic vibration system, the spring mass damper of any body in which you see here, you can simply see that our desired output is x 0, the input is given as x i. So, in this you see here, whether the mass which is just moving with any of the acceleration is introducing the uh, inertia forces, we have the restoring forces and the damping forces and all the forces are being acted in effective way. Only we need to see that how we can control the plate form under which you see here the all excitations are happening. So, as I told you the input is our XIT which is to be applied to the plate form, through that the excitations are being transmitted and we just want to control this plate form the response of the body or we can say the mass is x 0. And we just want that it should be identical to the input system. Now, if we apply the Newton's law to all the forces which I told you, we can simply frame the equation of motion m x double dot the inertia force, the acceleration since it is there. So, that is why the inertia force is quite dominating, restoring force because of the spring k into x i minus x 0 the difference of output and input feature and the damping force c into x dot i x x dot i and x dot o. And you see here this equation is clearly giving the relation that this is you know like the kind of motion which has been solved using the harmonic input. And for a general solution again it is a pretty simple mathematical form of your ordinary differential equation, we can use the d operator the differential operator for our own convenience. So, you see here what we have, we have the basic equation in the differential operator is m d square x 0 in terms of output you see here equals to k x i minus x 0 plus c d x i minus x 0 or else we can say that it is nothing but equals to k plus c d x i minus x 0. So, this is my force now, the inertia force which has to be there you see which we need to feed in that. So, we can now design the control loop for that and in that you see it should be noted that although we are using the differential operator, which is a neat and compact form of writing the equation, but sometimes you see here it is not that it is pretty easy to solve those things. The solving method is again a simple original differential or ordinary differential equation in the original way. 
So, say that if the force F is acted on the body is the inertia force and in that you see here m d square x 0. So, now we have F 1 by m d square that is nothing but equals to you see the total output which is coming out from this. So, with this particular feature with this force now we can draw the transfer function for this. So, the transfer function of the system is a function which is nothing but you see the input is multiplied to the output so that the f you see here which is simply a input in the system on the body and x 0 which is the output if we multiply by this transfer function it is clearly giving that what exactly the relation between the output and input. And how much transfer of the vibration can be happen when you have input and output and the media. So, ba based on this theory we can say that f is my input x 0 is my output. So, in between my transfer function which is a part of my block diagram is 1 by m d square. So, now you see here this is what on your screen we have f and x 0 and 1 by m d square is this and 1 by m d square is my transfer function. So, now if I am going towards the spring damper unit we know that the f which is you see my inertia force is nothing but equals to k plus c d x i minus x 0. So, my x, x i minus x 0 is the real because x 0 is output x i is input. So, you see what is the difference in that this is my error and again you see I want to actuate this thing. So, x i minus x 0 is now feed it and it has to transmit through damping and the stiffness the spring. So, we have k plus c d and then you see whatever the f is there because the input because we are giving input to the spring or damper unit is x i minus x o and the output is f the transfer function here is k plus c d through which the entire transmission is happening. And this system now if we just want to combine those things here in the mass as well as in the damping and stiffener then we can say that the overall picture of the system is like that our input is x i the output is x 0 and this entire transmission right from inlet displacement to outlet displacement is happening through the, these devices the spring and the damper is parallel and they are simply in between the connected in between the foundation to your mass. So, k plus c d is my one transfer function through which the transmission happened and m by d square m into d square 1 by m, by m into d square is my another transfer function which is simply relating the mass towards the inertia part inertia forces. So, now in all we have x i x i minus x 0 is my error function which can be feeded in the iteration feature towards the actuation part it is going to k plus c d and giving the output f and this f is now going towards the 1 by m d square. So, we can get the x 0 output or else we can combine this because this is the total system a spring mass damper system. So, in all we can say that this is what my control loop system in which you see here the error can be even magnified or this is perfect display of my feedback control. It is x i and x x 0 the error is x i minus x 0 which is feeded to the transfer function k plus c d divided by m d square. So, the transient or any intermittent feature is simply eliminated by effectively put all the features together. So, we have this x i and x 0 and in between this this is what you see the perfect show of the feedback uh, the feedback control system in the control loop. So, in this figure you see here conveniently we can say that the unit feed feedback loop is always being formed essentially the spring and damper acts as an error sensing device as we discussed and generates a restoring oblique damping force relate to the error and then you see this error is in between that. So, we can say that since the x i minus x 0 into k plus c d over m d square is giving us our x 0 we can say that x 0 can be simply get by c plus c into d plus k divided by this m d square c d plus k where d is the differential operator equals to x i or else or else we can say that x 0 by x i this is again you see here the outcome by input in income 
incoming that is nothing but you see the transfer function for overall system is a CD, C is the damping coefficient, D is the differential operator CD plus K divided by MD square plus CD plus K. So, this is the total transfer function of a perfect spring mass damper system and we can get the accurate you see here outcome by input. So, this, is, this transfer function of any dynamic system with the feedback is also known as the closed loop transfer function because it provides us a clear feedback in terms of the restoring force. And for the equation we can generate this is m q double dot q is my coordinate of a generalized feature or a state space coordinate we can say g plus d q dot t k plus h q dot t equals to minus k p q minus k v q dot equals to f. Here you see we have two gain features. So, again you see here we can apply a gain matrices because we need to amplify those things. So, certainly you see here this vector version of the equation which I just saw there in that there are two coefficients just showing k p and k v are the feedback gain matrices because ultimately whatever the error is coming I need to feed again back to the damper as well as to the spring. Thus the analysis performed on the equation will also be useful for studying the vibration of a structural feature which can be controlled by the position and the velocity feedback generally we are saying that the state feedback in terms of the k p and k v because you see here we are giving feedback to the uh, q of t and q dot of t which are absolutely related to the spring and the damping facilities. And you see here now if you are just going towards the other feature we know that every system is not a single degree of freedom system we need to go for multi degree of freedom system as well. So, the state space form of the equation is always applicable to that. So, most of the work carried out in any linear system is just developed in the state space form and the state space form is always you see here x dot t is always giving you the a into x of t means the velocity is nothing but equals to some coefficient a into x of t the state vector and b u of t where u is the applied force or any you see control vector we can say. So, here the x is the state vector a is the state matrix and b is the input matrix because a is you no know, like absolutely related to the displacement and b is related to the u of t where the u is the applied force or control vector or anything which we can say. So, again the state matrix is there, the input matrix is there and then we have both the state vector and the control vector in the equation. So, this is you see the state, state, state space form for that. Many of the software you see here which is being uh, you know like uh, applied uh, which is being generated and the theoretical development exists for these kind of equations only. So, the equation can be written in various ways just for the transformation. So, we can say that if I have the state space coordinates say q for displacement and q dot for velocity I can say that x 1 the initial feature x 1 equals to q and x 2 equals to q dot. Then I can write the equations for two coupled system is x 1 dot t is nothing, nothing but equals to x 2 because we, we know that x 1 is q, x 2 is q dot. So, x 1 dot is equals to x 2 and x 2 dot which is nothing but the acceleration feature is simply giving you the basic equation of the motion if you have just c then we will find that minus d plus g the gain and the differential operator into x 2 of t minus k plus h x 1 t equals to plus f of t the forcing factor. This form allows the theory of control and the system analysis to be directly applied to any vibration problem because we have effective input in terms of the displacement and the velocity. And now if you are saying that there is a matrix which is being there for you know like say mass or say you see here the damping or for stiffness. So, say if we have the mass matrix 
m inverse is always there in terms of the inverse of mass matrix. We can say that the inverse and uh, the original matrix is always giving the identity matrix. That is a one form, theoretical form of the uh, equation is. So, now we can write the equation x dot t equals to the matrix formation in the state, uh, state space form that is 0 1 minus m inverse k plus h and minus m inverse d plus g. Because now we are trying to convert this into the real state state, for, uh, state space form into x of t plus 0 over m inverse f of t. So, now this coupled equation is now in the state space form or we can say in the matrix form, where we can say that we can simply put the state matrix just like you see if you remember the first case which we said that the x dot t is nothing but equals to a into x of t plus b into u of t. Here the a is the state matrix which is nothing but equals to the first feature related to x of t that is 0 1 minus m inverse k plus h minus m inverse d plus z and the b which is the input matrix is nothing but equals to 0 over m inverse. And you see where we can say that the x which is my input feature you see here in the state matrix. So, we can say x is x 1 comma x 2 transpose or else we can say that this is q of t and q dot of t in the transpose manner. So, the state space approach has made a big impact on the development of control theory and to a laser but it is still significant that we are applying to multi body systems and also to vibration theory as well. So, this state space represent an, uh, uh, representation also forms the approach used for numerical simulation and calculation of the vibration analysis. The matrix inverse m inverse can easily be calculated can be also calculated easily by the number of different uh, various numerical methods and you see here we can straightway go to the factorization of this part. And the simple calculation can also show that you see the how second order matrices can be formed. Say we have m the mass matrix is a b c d we know that the m inverse is nothing but equals to 1 by determinant of m into the transpose of this d minus b minus c a and you see here from this we can calculate the determinant of a m is nothing but equals to a d minus c b or else we can say that if it is 0 then a d equals to c b, where m is singular if we have both the determinant is 0 and therefore, the m inverse will not be exist in this because it is a singular matrix. So, in general you see it should be noted that if a matrix inverse exists then only you see here it is a unique solution for that. Further inverse of the product of the square matrices can also be you see here according to the matrix theorems A B uh, inverse is nothing but equals to B inverse into A inverse. So, now you see here we are taking one example which is from the Marovich book that how you see a rotating ring with the negligible mass can be framed you see in the equation how we can you know like uh, put the feedback controller for that. So, we have a rotating ring, I am going to show you the, uh, the figure there itself, which has you see the negligible mass containing an object of any mass that is free to move in the plane of rotation. And you see here, this is what it is, we have a plane you see here in that and it is being rotated here. And you can see that we have the, uh, the, uh, the springs connected to all the feature, this is spring and damper is k1 and c and this mass is now connected to all other featured by the same spring k2, k2 here and k2 here this. So, this mass is now constrained it is on the base plate you see here we are not considering the mass of the base plate, but there is a mass which is absolutely on the table and it is being rotated and being constrained by that. In the figure there are two springs k1 and k2 and you see here since uh, it is always being acting both compression and the extension. So, the it has a positive spring stiffness, there is a damper C also which just shows the damping rate there itself and is being you see you know like uh, the entire table is moving in the circular feature. So, we have angular velocity of the disc omega that is given the omega is given to, to go uh, given to that one. We can frame the equation of motion for this as you can see that the m 0 and 0 m is with the q double dot 
the inertia force in the state space form. Then you have, then we have C 0, 0, 0 because the C is just connected to one feature and then 2 omega that is q dot, 2 omega, 2 m omega 0 minus 1, 1 0 q dot is there and then in that other, another form of the stiffness matrices, we have k 1 plus k 2 minus m omega square as it is an angularly uh, rotating feature, 0, 0 and 2 k, 2 minus because you know like both sides the springs are there. So, it is 2 k 2 minus m omega square into q the state space form equals to 0, where q is my coordinate simply shows the displacement vector is x of t and y of t transpose. So, I have you see like both the terms together in that as you see the coupled one in x and y direction. Now, you see we can simply framed the matrices for mass, for d damper and for stiffness and they must be symmetric, while we have the gain matrix which should be skew symmetric. So, that the system can be framed in the gyroscopic system because of the circular risk, circular disk. So, now you see if we apply this, we have x transpose mass matrix into x is nothing but equals to x1, x2 in the linear frame of trans transpose, the mass matrix is m 0 0 m and x1 and x2 are just my displacement vector or else we can say that m into x 1 square plus x 2 square and it must be greater than 0 to have an effective control on that. Note that for any arbitrary non-zero vector x, the quadratic form is absolutely associated with the matrix m and it becomes x transpose c 0 0 0 x which just gives that c into x square or else we can see because you see it is just a transpose feature, so x square and it should be greater than 0. Similarly, you see here the x transpose m x must be positive for all non-zero choices of m. For x and matrix m, obviously it must be in the symmetric feature. For any non-singular, that means you see here the m, m inverse must be exist. Likewise, the quadratic form of the damping matrices C 1 x square becomes you see here in like a in the quadratic feature because you see we know that it is a velocity oriented feature and it, it always be non negative and we can say that x transpose d x or it is equals to c x 0 must be a non zero vector. So, we can say that ultimately our d is a positive semi definite or we can say a singular one the damping matrix. And you see here now we just want to calculate the quadratic form of the equations and then we just want to see that what is the real value of x. So, for that we need to go to our gain matrix. So, it is x transpose g x is equals to 2 m rotational feature tau or the omega into x 1 x 2 minus x 2 x 1. And this is you see you know like uh, always true for any general conditions and because you see here it just shows the quadratic form of the any order real skew symmetric matrix and you see here in that we can say that in any form of the quadratic it, mu it must be equals to 0. So, you see here this is one form of the equation which just shows that how we can get the gain matrix, uh, displacement matrix, uh, uh, this uh, damping matrix and the mass matrix for that and how we can simply control by simply putting all these values together. The another feature in the control system of any vibration control is the Lyapunov stability. We people are all talking about the system is stable, unstable, you know like uh, linear, non-linear, but the important thing is that for any effective control, we need to check it out the stability first, because you see here ultimately we need to put the parametric ranges to see the stable feature of any system. So, a rough idea concerning to the concept of stability as we discussed you see with the characteristic roots of the characteristic equation in any single degree of uh, freedom in our first chapter as discussed that you see whether the roots are real or the complex and then you see here how the roots if they are just going positive negative then whether the whether they are showing the system equations or the system 
is stable or unstable. So, it was pointed out that the sign of the coefficients of even any dynamic parameter may be acceleration, velocity or displacement term is simply determining the stability behavior of any single order system. So, just you see the sign notations are indicating whether the system is converging or diverging part, whether it is stable or unstable part. So, you see here if the coefficients have the proper sign, the motion will always remain in the same when they are just given bounding features. And this idea is simply extended here in this chapter for multi degree of freedom system as we know that you know, like when we are going for these things, we need to check it out for the state space form, how we can control these with the using of these characteristic roots. So, the majority of the work on the stability behavior of any dynamical system for multi body system is based on the formal definition of stability by given by the Lyapunov, which was published by Hahn in 1962. And this definition is stated with the reference to the equilibrium point, the stable equilibrium point x 0 for any given system. So, we need to make an a reference point and then we need to check it out whether the system is bifurcating with any extension or whether it is you know, like going towards diverging or converging feature. And in the case of linear system, which generally considered in this chapter, the equilibrium point can always be taken from the 0 vector. And the definition of Lyapunov exponent is usually stated that the state vector of any given system under uh, the state vector under any you know like given system rather than the physical coordinate directly. So, that the equilibrium point which we are referring can be simply judged based on the position and the velocity feature. So, say you see if you are saying that x 0 is the representation of vector of initial condition for a given system both for velocity and the position itself. The system can be set to a static equilibrium or stable equilibrium if for any arbitrary positive number with say zeta or any arbitrary positive number is there, there exists some positive number such that whenever x of 0 means the initial representation, initial condition is less than delta and then we can say that any increment x of t will also be less than z, uh, this uh, positive number uh, delta for all values of t, for all values of uh, preceding t, where the t is greater than 0. The physical interpretation of this mathematical definition says that, that if the initial state is within the certain value, then the motion will always be stays within the bound of the, whatever, whatever the conditions are there for all the time. That means, you see here, it will never cross the barrier of bound, even we are proceeding with any uh, iterations of that t 1 plus t 2 plus t 3 plus t 4 like that. And here x of t, which we are saying that the preceding step is called the normali normalized factor of x is defined by x of t modulus is equals to x transpose x t to the power half as we, as we are moving further. So, this is you know like one of the stable condition for equilibrium position that you see here, you know like always x of t when we are proceeding is less than that arbitrary number for any value of t 0, t, t is greater than 0. And if you are saying that say x of 0 when we are initially assuming is representing the initial condition of vector for both, the system is absolutely in the form of the stable vector. And if we apply this definition to single degree of freedom system, we can say that the x of t is nothing but equals to the x of t and then you x dot t with the transpose feature or else we can say that when we are applying the uh, amplitude feature of that, it is nothing but equals to x of t x square root or we can say that it is nothing but equals to the square root of x square plus x dash square t. And then you see here, if you are applying the initial condition say that you see x of 0 is equals to 0, we can say that x dot t which is nothing but equals to say is because this is the input harmonic excitations. We know that say x is nothing but equals to a sin omega t, the x dot is nothing but equals to a omega cos omega t. So, it is a phasor difference and if you are applying to x dot 0, 
we can get you see the omega which is nothing but equals to square root of k by m. So, the solution which is given by x of t as sin omega and t instinctively this system has a stable response as the displacement response is bounded by 1 and the velocity response is bounded by the natural frequency omega n. So, this is the characteristic feature here that if we bound the system solution by unit displacement, then we have the velocity response is absolutely bounded by the natural frequency, because the velocity is the linearly dependent on the natural frequency, just like the acceleration is a non-linear dependent, acceleration is omega square. And we can simply go to find out the solution which can satisfy the Lyapunov stability definition. So, that is how you see what the steps are there now, we are going to check that you see here how the things are being there. So, first of all, we know that the initial condition should be pretty accurate. So, x of 0 when we are applying it is x 0 square plus x dot, x dot 0 square and if we are just applying this, it, this is 0 omega n square and a square root half of that. So, we have the omega n as in a modulus of x 0 and if we are going with the x of t as an increment of that, we have the sin square omega n, the sinusoidal feature of that plus omega square and cos square omega n t square root and which must be less than 1 plus omega n square square root of this. And this expression is exactly shows that how to choose the delta as the function of the arbitrary value zeta of this system. And we can say that this is if 1 plus omega n square of half that is nothing but the modulus of x of t is less than the arbitrary value, we can say that we can simply move further without having any unstable bounded solution x of t equals to zeta. And then you see here if the delta which is a function of arbitrary value is chosen to be in such a way that it is zeta omega n 1 plus omega n square square root, then certainly we can say that it is straight way apply to the condition if if we have you see the omega uh, the x 0 which is equals to omega n minus zeta this one or we can say that the modulus of x, x of 0 which is nothing but equals to omega n is zeta omega n divided by 1 square root of 1 plus omega n square. And this is absolutely true then omega n is less than this one. And this last expression is just giving that 1 plus omega n square square root which is the modulus of our x of t must be less than the arbitrary value chosen. And if this is true, then we can say that ultimately x of t which should be less than or equals to the preceding step of our displacement, which must be less than equals to square root of 1 plus omega n square or else it should be less than the arbitrary chosen value. Hence, you see here by this judicious choice of this function, we can say that if x of 0 the model of the initial part is less than the, del, the any function of the arbitrary value, then we can say that the x of t must be less than that arbitrary value chosen for any time increment for this Lyapunov exponent. So, this is true for any arbitrary choice of the positive number zeta and the preceding argument demonstrate that the undamped harmonic oscillate, uh, oscillator has the solution that satisfy the formal definition of the Lyapunov exponent. And if the dissipation such as the viscous damping or anything is being included in the formulation, then not only this definition stability satisfy, but also because you see here there is an additional source here, which is just used to extract the energy from the system back, which simply uh, leads the system towards the more stable form. We can say the limit t tends to infinite x of t must be equals to 0 and such systems are said to be asymptotically stable. In case of even the single degree of freedom system, the system is also asymptotically stable even it is also called sometimes the stable features. And in fact, by definition a system is asymptotically stable if it is stable and again that norm of its response goes to 0 as you see t, be, t becomes large. So, you see here if we are going up to the infinite time increment, the system becomes even more stable form. So, this is you see here one of the mathematical representation 
of the Lyapunov stability and this stability of the system can also be characterized by as we told as I told you the eigenvalues, the sign of these things and in fact it can be easily shown that a given linear system is stable if and only if it has no eigenvalue with the positive real part. Because if it is if it has a positive real part that means you see some additional energy is to be feeded to the system and that makes system unstable. Furthermore, the system will be asymptotically stable if and only if its all eigenvalues have negative real parts, non-zero real part allowed. And these statements are certainly consistent with all the sections which we discussed previously. And the correctness of the statement can be seen by examining the solution using the expansion model analysis of that. So, the eigenvalue approaches to the stability has attracted both the necessary and sufficient condition. However, the calculating eigenvalues uh, of the state matrix of a system is not always desirable because the Lyapunov exponent is giving a clear picture about the bifurcation of that. And the preceding statement about the stability are not always the easiest criteria to check. In fact, we can use the eigenvalue criteria require almost much calculation as compared to the solution of system. So, when we are talking about this, we know that the system is stable in either conditions whether we are applying the Lyapunov theory in which you see here the initial displacement and the velocity vectors are being defined and then further in the preceding steps we can see that whether the solution is bounded or not. And we can check it out that whether the it, when it uh, cross the barrier of that certainly of any chosen value that means you see here the system is going towards the converging part some additional energy is to be supplied to the system. So, system makes the unstable or else you see here even the eigenvalue that is nothing but the characteristic roots the nature itself speaks whether the system is going towards the stable or unstable manner. So, you see this is all about this chapter the next chapter we are going to discuss something about even the feedback control and then you see here how the theories can be applied for the vibration control. Thank you.